The stem cell debate is filled with controversy, questions, and confusion about science, cures, and how we should treat human life at every stage. While we prolong the stem cell debate, millions continue to suffer. And stem cell research offers hope, hope of a cure. The embryonic stem cell fervor, I guess is the word I'm looking for, has blinded people to what else is available. And as an individual with a disability, I don't want precious resources that could be dedicated to adult stem cell research to be diverted into very iffy and not very promising embryonic stem cell research. How the people resolve the stem cell debate will impact countless lives. Not only patients seeking cures, but young human beings some want to destroy, searching for those cures. It's time to learn the facts. The science of stem cells, finding cures, and protecting life. We begin in the laboratory with a look under the microscope. These are stem cells. They may not look like much, but stem cells are remarkable building blocks of the body with an ability to repair or even replace damaged tissues and cells. There's a virtually limitless supply of what's known as mature or adult stem cells. They're found throughout the body, for example, in bone marrow, fat tissue, even umbilical cord blood. Some of America's leading researchers, like Dr. David Hess, are intensely interested in adult stem cells. You know, adult stem cells are used right now to treat many cancers and leukemias very successfully. There's, there's no question about that. In fact, there is no question adult stem cells currently help people suffering from dozens of diseases and conditions. While there are many reasons to be encouraged about stem cell success, it's important to know all the facts. There is some hope with stem cells. There's also a lot of hype with stem cells. That hype is typically connected to another kind of stem cell called embryonic stem cells. They're harvested from live human embryos, which are destroyed in the process. Embryos can also be created in the lab using in vitro fertilization or IVF. One IVF procedure requires a technician to use a needle to inject sperm into a human egg. The new embryo is implanted into a woman where it continues to grow until birth. Thousands of extra human embryos are created by the IVF industry, then frozen and stored each year. Some people think we should conduct experiments with them. Certain scientists claim embryonic stem cells offer the best hope and promise for finding cures. But there are real scientific problems with embryonic stem cell research that no one seems able to solve. In fact, not one successful cure or treatment has resulted from embryonic stem cell research. And scientists now say cures may not emerge for decades, if ever. Embryonic stem cells are unstable and tend to form uncontrollable tumors if transplanted into the body. Experiments show our body's own immune system may reject these cells if they are used to replace diseased or injured cells. To solve that problem, and to create still more embryos for use in the laboratory, scientists want to artificially create or clone human embryos. Cloning is known by another name, somatic cell nuclear transfer. It's the same process used to create Dolly the sheep. Here's how it works. Several eggs are surgically removed from a woman, and the nucleus of each egg is removed and discarded. At the same time, an ordinary cell for example, a skin cell is removed from someone's body. That cell's nucleus or DNA is then transferred into the human egg. The act of cloning is completed when the scientist stimulates the cell with a chemical or electrical charge. That triggers cell division, quickly producing a multicellular embryo called a blastocyst. This is the same kind of human embryo conceived naturally by husband and wife in the marital act. The same human embryo created in the IVF process, 
all of them may be capable of growing into a full-grown child. What makes this cloned embryo different is what happens next. It's quite literally a matter of life or death. Inside the blastocyst are the coveted stem cells, but to harvest them, the scientist must always manipulate and destroy the human embryo. If human cloning like this becomes mainstream, the destruction of human life will be repeated on a massive scale. No one has successfully cloned a human embryo for stem cells yet. That there's no egg fairy and that the cloning research uh, that the cloning researchers desperately want to do will require um, you know millions of eggs. Jennifer Lal is a nurse and bioethicist working with a coalition of feminists from all across the political and religious spectrum. Hands Off Our Ovaries is a calling for an immediate moratorium on human egg donation for research purposes. Lal and others say it's impossible for egg donors to be fully informed about what they're doing. What we do know is the powerful drug injected into women that produces abnormally large numbers of eggs can cause severe health problems. It's a condition known as ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Which can be everything from bloating and cramping and swelling and mood swings all the way up to serious risk like stroke, uh, like organ failure, uh, like death and reproductive cancers. For Jennifer Lal, the massive quantities of human eggs needed for embryo cloning research will harm women. For James Kelly, it's nothing less than a waste of valuable time and resources. Before a tragic car accident paralyzed him in 1997, Kelly and his wife were avid hikers. Dr. Andy, how you doing? This is Jim Kelly. Like other more famous patient advocates, Kelly initially supported embryonic stem cell research. Today, he spends much of his time opposing embryo destructive research while supporting adult stem cell research. Our life is slipping away. And uh, if resources continue to be diverted for decades away from things that could help me and people from around the country with a lot of conditions, then uh, we're going to continue to, to die and suffer. Kelly and others like him draw hope and strength from people like Jackie Raybon. An outstanding athlete, Jackie dreamed about playing college volleyball. But when her spine shattered in a car accident, so did her dreams. Doctors told her she'd never walk again. But thanks to a groundbreaking new treatment, adult stem cells taken from her own nose were used to repair and regenerate tissues in her spine. Today, with help, Jackie walks. It's a feat doctors once thought would be impossible. Adult stem cells, I mean, it's from your own body. There's no, you're not harming anybody for it. I mean, you're healing yourself. So I think that's, that's awesome if you can heal yourself. But with the embryotic, you're using somebody else's life to heal yourself, and I think that that's wrong, that you shouldn't have to hurt somebody else to help you. To what extent can we use another human life to help our own? It is a question that cuts to the heart of the ethical debate surrounding stem cell research. Can the end ever justify the means? An embryonic stem cell research is a kind of technology that always involves doing violence to young humans. Not only is embryo destructive research morally wrong, it has not cured anyone of anything. Adult stem cell research is already helping the sick today, while offering still greater hope for the future. The reality is, we can support the science of stem cells, finding cures and protecting life.